Uh, here on uh, Passion Time and our guest today is Dr. Sophia Manu. She is with Baylor College of Medicine and she runs the International Trauma Clinic or Torture Clinic for refugees. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Dr. Banu, thank you for joining us. Um, my first question always starts with how did you know or how did you find out how to live your passion? Because in this case you're taking care of refugees. refugees yeah. So I sort of stumbled on it in a way, um, right after medical school, I went to Nepal, I had family, and a friend of mine who was a social worker asked me to work at their clinic for torture survivors, and they had a lot of women who had been tortured and raped, but they were refusing to go see a male doctor, and she said, oh, you're a female doctor, if you come, these women will come and talk to you and you can treat them, but at that time I wasn't a psychiatrist, I was just an MBBS, a medical doctor, right after okay. medical school. So that's how I started working and then, then slowly it became a passion for me. And also I think because of my background, my parents were refugees to, from Tibet to India. And so I guess it was already there to begin with and sort of tapped at the right moment. Right, right. Let's talk about the refugees. You're here in Houston, which is one of the top resettlement cities in the country. Where are you seeing refugees from? So presently, in the past few years, I've seen most of the refugees have been either from Burma, uh, Bhutan, slash Nepal, um, Iraq now, Afghan Afghanistan, a few from Congo, from Somalia, from Ethiopia. But I know that's going to change over the next few years. How do you define, you said torture, how do you define torture? I would think that being bombed, uh, seeing people die on a daily basis, uh, which is what's happening in Syria, for example, where they've had 250,000 people killed, is torture in a way. Yes, uh, that is torture in a way, but um, you know, UN has a definition of torture, uh, so there's the Tokyo uh, Declaration of uh, Torture uh, definition. Sure. So there are different definitions, and what I, when I say torture, is specifically by the government or agencies that are related to the government. But I agree with you, everybody who's a refugee and who's been through any kind of trauma is, is torture. Yeah, you know? Like yeah. having to see your whole house being bombed or your or being, being killed. Yeah. 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 Or, or you yourself being maimed in some way and having to flee the country. That would be torture too, you know, defined as torture, but I guess a broader term would be trauma. What would you say are the most common challenges that these uh, refugees who are coming here to Houston face? I mean, how, how do you deal with it? I mean, something that's overwhelming to me, I would think, being raped and tortured mm -hmm. uh, and having to adapt on top of all that, adapt to a new culture that's completely different. We don't even speak the language. That's true. Um, all of that, everything that you said, um, language, culture, I mean, forget about the trauma that you've been through. You know, you just come into a new country where you don't know the language, you don't know anybody here, you're completely new, and you're dependent on a caseworker who's already overwhelmed with so many other refugees that they're taking care of to, to provide or help, you know. And then I think the government gives, um, well, the, the resettlement agency provides support for about eight months. That's and it. after eight months, you're supposed to have learned the language, managed to get a job, and move on which most of them do, surprisingly, you know. I mean, they're so resilient, they've been through so much, and I think you can see that, so, but, but a, a few don't. But um, I think the resettlement agencies do a lot, lot for them. What surprises you the most about these refugees? Oh, I think just one word, resilience. You know, every time I see, <coughs> and I've worked with refugees for so many years, like right after medical school, that's about 15, 20 years. Um, I never get uh, like stop getting amazed at how resilient they are. You know, they're sitting in my office or in the hospital. You know, we're talking about what they've been doing, and you know they've um, you're sitting there with a smile on their faces and saying how helpful people have been. You know, those resettlement agencies, the neighbors, their friends, their relatives, doctors, nurses, and how they managed to <coughs> overcome everything, and they they got a job. Mm -hmm. The children are in school, they're reunited with their family in some cases, and how they've moved on. You can't imagine.
imagine that the same person was sitting in my office a few months or a year ago saying that they were in prison, they were tortured in the most horrific way, that their mother was killed in front of them, they, they don't know where their brother is, and they managed to reach the U.S. And, you know, and here they've managed to collect the pieces and move, moved on. So that, that never, I don't think, I always, I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, you're getting goosebumps. <laughs> you're giving me yeah. goosebumps. Um, how but do that's, you... But, but that's, how they, how, that's how they are. They, you know, just so resilient. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. How do you help them, though? Obviously, you're doing your job as a psychiatrist. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. they move on. But moving on from trauma, how do you as a psychiatrist help them move on? Well, I think the most important thing, uh, I think the most important thing that I feel I can help is by listening. Sometimes it's not about medication, it's not about some specific type of uh, therapy that I use or anything like that. It's just about being there in the moment and listening to their suffering, what they've been through, and sort of validating that. and empathizing with them, I think that goes a long way. Because a lot of people come and tell me, like, you know, they meet criteria for PTSD, post-traumatic stress yes. disorder, or major depression, um, but they don't necessarily need medication. They just need you to hear what they've been through. And sometimes they come to, so I do prescribe medication if they need sure, it. Yeah. You know, because if they're not sleeping, they're having nightmares, mm -hmm. they're having flashbacks, they're always scared of the people around them. They can't work, so you need some medication to help them to relax. But they say even before they reach home, you know, they, they were feeling better. What did I do? I didn't do anything. I just listened to them. I just sort of, you know, gave them some sense of control over that session that they had over in, in, in that moment. Because before that, they lost control over everything. They didn't have control over their lives. They didn't know where they were going to go. They didn't know how long they were going to be in the refugee camp. They didn't know if they were going to get water or not, you know. But in the session, I let them say or talk about whatever they want. Would you say there are cultures that do better than others because of their belief systems or their spirituality mm -hmm. or...? Yeah, I mean, some some differences, you know, um, in, um, well, if you see Burmese and Bhutanese, they're more, um, you know, and I've heard case where they say, oh, everything is fine, they say everything is fine when everything is not fine. Right. And they say, oh, do you need any? Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, everything's okay, but they're not okay. You know, and then there's some other um, groups where they, they are able to verbalize what they want and what they need. And it may have to do with, um, you know, the background, the, the country they come from. And then, and, and then in some cultures where they believe that it's their destiny to, to have suffered. Oh, and, you know, oh. so then they move forward like Tibetans right. believe that it's their karma, you know, like oh, they're losing their, their destiny. Karma to suffer uh, or to, to, sure. to, you know, have to go through this. So then they pray that the next one would be a better life. Because I, I, I would like to share this with you. One of, one of my first torture survivors was a Buddhist nun who had been raped and tortured. And so when I was, you know, I was documenting cases for Amnesty International, this was years ago. So I asked her, you must be angry and, you know, frustrated and upset. and. What she told me was, uh, no, I'm not, because I, I feel bad for them, for her perpetrators, because it was their destiny to be so evil that she would pray for them that in their next life they would be born as better human beings. Oh, wow. So forget about oh her God. suffering and her, right. uh, right. you know, um, what she was. She felt through. bad she for felt their bad karma. For their karma. That she was going to, so in that sense, her spirituality was her strength. Right. Her uh, being able to see that that man or that woman, whoever did that to her, their karma was so bad that she was going to pray for them that in the next life, you know, they believe in reincarnation. The next life, they would be born as better. Do you um, expect? Have you have you have you seen any Syrian refugees, which is what's in the news right now? Uh, no, no, I haven't seen any Syrian, but I do. I have been receiving calls um, saying that they need an appointment and they are trying to make appointments. I haven't seen, but we did. I did attend the Day of Dignity recently, last Saturday, and actually that was the day I got your email. Yes. And that was such a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was organized by Alamana. Uh -huh. um, I think it was with the Islamic Relief of USA, yes. and so they, there I saw some refugees from Syria, 
in and, and more event. expected to come to no, Houston. No, expected to come to Houston. Yeah, next absolutely. year, and you'll be at our concert on December 5th yes, um, yes. Um, at, at 8 o'clock. Um, check our website on that. Uh, it's called Musicians for uh, refi Refugees. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Bonnie, for, mm -hmm. for joining us and, and for doing the work that you do. Thank uh, you. And, uh, Keep us posted, see what we can do, what, what our community can do to help.